Namaste and welcome back to the video course on watershed management. In module number 8, in lecture number 30, 32, we will discuss today urban drainage system. So, some of the important topics covered in this lecture include urban flooding, disaster risk management, urban drainage system, design requirements, roadside drainage design. Some of the keywords for today's lecture, urban flooding, drainage system design, risk management and roadside drain. So, as we were discussing earlier, so when we discuss about watershed management, so we are taking it as a holistic way. So, we have to see the urban areas also and then uh, we have to see the, the, the storm water management within the watersheds and then we have to see the say related flooding and overall uh, overall say the, the storm water management within the system. So, as we discussed uh, uh, in the last lecture, so um, the storm water system we have to we can design as separate system or combined system and then um, say whenever uh, the urbanization takes place, there is lot of changes to the to the watershed and the the time of concentration reduces and the, the peak to the hydrograph, the peak of the hydrograph increases. So, like that a number of hydrological changes takes place with respect to the runoff taking place within the watershed due to the urbanization. So, due to all this as we discussed there is good chance of say increase increased chance of flooding within the watershed. So, that way we have to we should appropriate uh, flood management uh, say planning as far as the watershed is concerned. So, some of the the, uh, the causes of urban flooding uh, say here I have mentioned. So, the it, it can be as we discussed a large increase in concrete or impervious surfaces or unplanned usage of urban lands or lack of proper drainage or loss of wetlands or it can be less groundwater usage or recharge, tidal effects or very heavy storms or cloud, cloud bursts or say like a climate change effect. So, there can be number of uh, such causes as far as urban flooding is concerned. So, say lot of changes takes place due to the urbanization to the considered watershed. So, that way uh, the impervious surface area increases and then uh, wetlands uh, uh, will be lost many locations and then uh, if there is no sufficient drainage or the drainage is not proper then the chances of uh, flooding increases. So, that way we can see that uh, in most of the urbanized watershed say there is uh, problems of flooding. So, the problems of flooding are increasing and then uh, we have to we should have uh, appropriate plans when we deal with the watershed management. So, now let us look into what are the, the, the things which we can do to, to deal with this kinds of urban flooding say on a watershed basis. So, in this slide some of the important points uh, related to urban flood disaster risk management are mentioned. So, as we discussed say to deal with this kinds of urban flooding, we have to develop appropriate coping strategies and disaster reduction plans along with the greater awareness of how to reduce risk. So, that is the uh, high priority as far as watershed development and plans are concerned. So, there can be number of strategies. So, strategies like um, we can go for enhanced national stage and local scale advocacy partnerships and knowledge management. So, we can get uh, say all the data and then come up with a certain uh, decision support systems which you can uh, say clearly say that what are the, the possible ways to reduce the uh, flood uh, say uh, urban flooding. And then uh, standardizing hazard risk management tools. So, we can say come up with some standard management tools uh, and methodologies and practices to to reduce the risk of uh, urban flooding. Then developing integrated and coordinated approaches. So, uh, say uh, as far as the flooding is concerned say as we discussed in the previous lecture also, it is uh, not only simply the, the storm water drainage which we have to manage, but we should have a look into holistic uh, say uh, watershed management uh, including LID schemes 
or low, low infrastructure developments or the integrated storm water uh, ma management schemes so like that as we discussed in the previous lecture so that way uh, we have to uh, standardize the 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 ma management tools and then we can have a uh, we can develop integrated and coordinated approaches and then also we can incorporate uh, learning by doing mode of operations so you can see that in many uh, cities say uh, there may be number of floods that happens in uh, earlier times. So, from that we can learn a number of lessons say for example, in Mumbai and uh, July 26, uh, 2005 there was a severe flooding. So, from that we can learn many lessons uh, and then we can implement uh, many changes many things uh, to the to the area considered uh, so that this flood risk uh, can be reduced. So, that way uh, this um, uh, the, the learning by doing mode of uh, operations are very uh, helpful. Then we can promote the diffusion or documentation of best practices. So, as we discussed in the previous lecture also, so there are a number of best practices are possible. So, we can say, uh, say come up with uh, specific documents say how we can reduce the risk, uh, risk uh, as far as the urban flood, flood is concerned. So, that uh, we can go for better management practices and then uh, this can be say uh, uh, communicated to various uh, the, the stakeholders including common pe public. Uh, schools um, uh, and public uh, enterprises or the, the private institutions. And then uh, also we can uh, build uh, appropriate communication protocols facilitating multi platform and multilingual dissemination. So, as far as flooding is concerned uh, say, uh, say if there is any area say due to heavy rainfall or any, any other reason if there is an area uh, which is flood prone then uh, uh, we need to have appropriate communication uh, protocols we can develop and then uh, the people uh, can be warned say just like uh, advanced flood warning systems and uh, that will, will be very useful to uh, the to reduce the risk as far as the urban flood is concerned. So, uh, whenever deal we, whenever we talk about the disaster risk management as far as urban flooding is concerned, uh, we have to come up with uh, appropriate plans and then uh, we have to come up with appropriate guidelines uh, with uh, uh, previous experiences and then also we have to disseminate this um, information to the stakeholders and uh, various agencies. So, that um, the, the uh, uh, appropriate flood warning uh, system can be made and uh, so people lives are, um, and money can be saved uh, this way. So, that way uh, when we discuss about the urban flood uh, disaster risk management, um, so we have to analyze uh, and present information in an easily understandable form for wider use uh, by decision makers. So, whatever we are making as far as the guidelines or as far as the management plans, so it should be uh, analyzed and presented in such a way that it is easily understandable to the decision makers or the politicians or the uh, district authorities uh, like that. And then uh, uh, we have we can encourage integrated approaches of uh, project implementation uh, based on master plan. So, each urban uh, urbanized watershed is concerned we can come up with uh, certain uh, master plans and then uh, uh, we can have uh, appro integrated approaches uh, as far as the project implementation is concerned. So, that uh, the, the flood risk uh, can be reduced and then also we can encourage uh, states to accord top priority to deal with uh, recurring uh, urban flooding. Say for example, government of India say as central government. So, um, uh, the government of India can encourage states governments to uh, give top priority as far as uh, to deal with uh, the urban flooding since when urban flooding happens say the economical loss will be very high, the human um, uh, loss will be very high. So, that way um, we should an integrated um, uh, flood uh, risk assessment plans and uh, we have to go for disaster risk management uh, as far as the, the urban flooding is concerned. So, whenever we deal with uh, the urban flooding number of difficulties are there. So, some of the uh, difficulties I have listed here like a comprehensive risk assessment, then factoring uh, risk in uh, development planning, coordination among different institutions, lack of information sharing, uh, disintegrated uh, investment uh, decisions, lack of uh, consultation with uh, stakeholders etcetera. So, like that when we look into urban flood management like whenever uh, we look into disaster risk management 
um, say number of problems are there. So, uh, say uh, most of the time number of agencies will be working as far as the uh, urban um, flood risk, risk assessment and management is concerned. So, we have to coordinate these agencies and then most of the time the stakeholders those who are affected by these floods they will not uh, have sufficient information. So, we have to consult with them and then we have to disseminate the knowledge and then um, uh, we have to uh, we should have comprehensive risk assessment plan uh, covering all the aspects with respect to the uh, master plans as far as the, the urbanized watershed is concerned uh, for um, uh, the, the uh, disaster uh, risk management. So, now uh, say uh, we were discussing uh, say when we deal with the urban flooding say it is always better to deal with uh, on a watershed scale or, a, or on a catchment scale. So, that the hydrological unit is considered in the in the plans as far as the urban flooding is concerned. So, now let us uh, discuss the urban flood management within the perspective of uh, uh, watershed um, uh, management. So, uh, as we discussed any planning for effective urban flood management has to take into the consideration of entire watershed. So, since um, uh, watershed is defined in such a way that it is hydrological unit uh, wherever the, the, the uh, we can have a single outlet where the all the, the runoff will be coming through a single outlet. So, that way the watershed is the best unit uh, to look into the urban flood management. So, then that way on watershed basis. Uh, we can identify the problems, causes and we can go for uh, various remedial measures. And then also uh, on watershed basis, uh, we can um, go for um, uh, the, the preparedness and then um, uh, mitigation as far as the flooding is concerned, what kind of mitigation measures to be undertaken. And then also since uh, watershed is a hydrologic unit, so when, when we look into early warning uh, system. Uh, and then communication it is always better to be on watershed uh, basis and then uh, the response action also uh, it is better to be on watershed uh, basis since the response is concerned uh, it is with respect to deal with the, the discharges uh, taking place within the watershed or the depth of flow taking place. And then also uh, we can go for awareness, awareness generation uh, within the various uh, stakeholders and that way uh, we can develop uh, uh, the community capacity uh, to deal with uh, such kind of uh, flood problems. And then also we can develop uh, vulnerability maps and then uh, risk assessment maps so that um, the total um, uh, the, the risk or the vulnerability due to the urban flooding uh, can be uh, reduced very much. So, that way uh, like uh, hazard mapping uh, or flood level mapping and then we can identify the damages and then uh, as a if any specific uh, locations are there then we can go for insurance and uh, risk transfer. So, that way uh, various things are possible uh, when we deal with uh, the urban flood management on a uh, watershed basis. So, it is not just like an administrative unit just like a district or a taluk or a village, but it is always uh, better to go on a watershed basis as far as urban uh, flood management is concerned. So, that way when we deal with um, uh, the urban flood management on a watershed basis, uh, if we can develop um, a special decision support system uh, which we discussed in one of the earlier lecture, we can develop appropriate sp special decision support system uh, which can uh, show uh, say the vulnerability to, to flooding or uh, say the, the uh, uh, flood risk areas and, and then uh, we can easily uh, predict which of the area uh, will be affected whenever uh, say uh, the water level rises to a certain level and then uh, so that way the decision makers can easily understand uh, what will be happening due to say certain uh, specified intensity of rainfall or the predicted rainfall. So, that appropriate uh, measures management measures can be taken to save lives or to save uh, properties. So, that way we can uh, have a, an urban information system say for example, in, uh, uh, in Mumbai city after the 26 July 2005 rainfall uh, say a disaster management cell has been opened and then this cell is 
uh, monitoring uh, say with respect to the, uh, the during the monsoon season how the, the very uh, rainfall pattern changes or um, with respect to heavy rainfall what are the possibilities of flooding or what are the uh, which are the areas uh, may, which may be affected due to flooding. So, that way uh, this disaster management cell uh, uh, gives information uh, to the public media and that will be disseminated and then that way uh, we can uh, have appropriate management plans. So, that way it is always uh, better to develop uh, an urban information system, uh, so that um, we can come up with uh, appropriate uh, plans uh, to deal with the, the, the urban uh, flooding uh, problems. So, now uh, whatever we have discussed is say the urban flooding and related causes and then uh, what are the risk involved and then how we can manage. So, now let us discuss about the urban drainage system since drainage uh, pattern or appropriate drainage is given then to a big extent uh, the, the uh, urban flooding can be uh, reduced. So, uh, appropriate uh, urban drainage system is very important um, as far as uh, the, uh, the uh, urban flood management is concerned. So, uh, urban drainage system, uh, so drainage system uh, generally we can categorized into uh, major drainage systems and minor drainage systems. So, major drainage systems generally say to this uh, comprises of open nalas or streams and channels and uh, natural uh, uh, surface drained. So, uh, uh, say whenever ra rainfall takes place uh, in the urbanized area, then uh, this uh, the, 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 the immediately the runoff starts uh, especially from the impervious surfaces and this will be collected through uh, minor uh, drainage systems just like a network of underground pipes and channels. So, that is so called uh, minor systems and this minor system will be joining the major drainage systems just like streams, nalas, uh, uh, say small channels or rivers. Uh, so, this uh, finally, it will be taken to uh, large rivers or uh, the to the to the uh, ocean uh, directly depending upon the area. So, uh, minor system generally we can ca categorize into two types like a separate and combined um, storm water drainage system. So, this also we have discussed in the last lecture. So, the separate drainage system uh, generally uh, th there is uh, one system to um, convey the, the st storm water and another system to uh, convey the sewage or the say as a separate sanitary sewers. So, um, the sanitary sewers usually underground pipes convey the waste water from homes and uh, business uh, to uh, discharge point while the storm um, drains uh, which is the underground pipes or channels collect the storm water from the rainfall runoff and convey to the uh, discharge point. So, depending upon the city or depending upon the location there may be uh, separate systems or the combined system. So, the advantages and limitations of separate system and combined system uh, we have discussed earlier. So, as far as urban drainage system is concerned there can be major drainage systems or the uh, uh, minor uh, drainage system. So, uh, when we look into the urban drainage processes, uh, so we can uh, put it in a flow chart like this. So, uh, the, the urban runoff is coming from precipitation or, uh, um, or snow, uh, say so precipitation as rain or snow and then if you consider the watershed area, there some area will be uh, um, uh, say um, uh, pervious area and some area will be uh, say urbanized or impervious area. So, uh, we should have um, uh, say uh, using hy hydrologic uh, models, so we can model this uh, rainfall to runoff uh, by considering various processes like um, evaporation, infiltration, overland flow like that and then um, say by, by using uh, hydrologic models, uh, we can uh, get the hydrographs, so which is uh, the uh, say overland flow as far as the, uh, the uh, considered uh, hydraulic unit is concerned. And then uh, this um, uh, the, the, the hydrographs which we consider that will be uh, further this uh, overland flow will be joined to the uh, channels uh, or the uh, big drains or small drains depending upon the conditions. And this uh, we can uh, model through hydraulic models. So, it can be either um, say uh, the, the flow through on the roads or say a pipe flow and so that can be various um, uh, uh, say there can be some storage as far as road is concerned or this we were to routes and then um, most of the time we have to identify how much will be the depth of flow and how much is their discharge 
passing or flooding uh, taking place. And then of course, as far as the uh, main roads are concerned, number of upper turns will be there, roadside drains will be there and then um, say uh, the culverts will be there, uh, then um, uh, inlet will be there. So, like that number of upper turns will be there, roadside upper turns will be there. So, uh, this uh, overland flow will be passed through the, the road to this to the upper turns to the uh, major drains like a drain channel or pipe and then that will be uh, uh, routed uh, uh, as drain flow and that will be the, uh, the discharge which is coming to a major channel stream or river and that will be further routed. So, that way when we discuss uh, with the urban drainage processes, so we have to uh, say deal with the hydrological aspects and the hydraulic aspects. So, had we, we need to have um, hydrologic models, so which uh, uh, converts uh, the uh, precipitation to runoff. Uh, so, that can be mainly on for overland flow conditions and then uh, we should have hydraulic models which will be uh, routing this uh, runoff through the roads, through the uh, roadside drains, uh, through various uh, appurtenances and then uh, through uh, uh, drainage channels or pipes and to the to the main uh, drainage system or the main mahala or the, the streams or river. So, that is the way uh, we have to model the uh, urban uh, drainage system uh, say starting from the precipitation to the runoff to, to the uh, main uh, river or channel uh, say through various uh, say overland flow conditions or roads road flow on the road or the uh, small drains pipes like that. So, this flow chart shows a typical uh, hydrologic process as far as urban hydrology is concerned. So, now let us look into uh, various aspects as far as uh, stormwater drainage system is concerned. So, as we discussed uh, uh, say this uh, total stormwater system can be major stormwater system or minor stormwater system. Major system include the uh, small ch um, ch channels, um, uh, nalas and um, rivers, minor mainly consists uh, pipe drains or sm small drains, open channel drains. So, we should have an inventory of all this uh, drainage system uh, within the area which we consider. So, most of the time we can do this uh, through a GIS platform, so that we can identify the locations easily, where is the major uh, uh, drainage system, uh, where, where, where are the minor systems, so like that. So, uh, we can, we should have an inventory, uh, so uh, uh, as far as with, with respect to the watershed to enable proper hydrologic and hydraulic analysis. Uh, and uh, what uh, so what or uh, say particular local uh, lo locality based uh, to enable coordinated administrative management so most of the time administration is concerned it is uh, the administrative uh, area will not be uh, most of the time uh, uh, the uh, watershed based so that way uh, say many of these uh, local administra administrations have to coordinate together so it is always better to have an inventory of the drainage system the major drainage system as well as the uh, minor drainage system. So, as far as minor drainage systems concerned, uh, uh, we should map this minor, minor drainage systems clearly showing the interconnections uh, with the major systems uh, uh, besides the cross connection uh, with the sewer lines. So, uh, uh, say uh, if there is any cross connection with the sewer lines uh, for the minor um, um, storm water drainage system that should be also clearly shown and all the interconnections should be shown and then uh, where this minor systems join the major systems also uh, should be uh, clearly shown. And then as far as major system is concerned, uh, we should map uh, clearly uh, with uh, delineation, demarcation and details of uh, cross sections, uh, then slopes, uh, um, drain uh, crossings including uh, natural formations and uh, man-made structures. So, all this uh, say we should have appropriate inventory uh, within a GIS platform, so that uh, say whenever we, uh, we, we, we are having a uh, flooding uh, warning systems, a flood warning system which predicts flooding, so that we can easily identify which area will be flooded and what kind of appropriate measures to be taken, so that um, uh, we can save lives and uh, property. So, that way uh, appropriate inventory in a GIS platform helps um, um, to uh, reduce the uh, flood related uh, problems. 
So, now uh, let us look. Uh, so, we are discussing about the urban drainage systems. So, whenever we are uh, going to design an appropriate urban drainage design, uh, say we have to meet with uh, certain requirements. So, let us look into various aspects as far as the urban drainage design requirements are concerned. Uh, so, the development of an adequate uh, and functioning uh, drainage system based on sound hydrologic and hydrologic design principle we should have. So, we have to see the hydrologic um, uh, principles. So, like rainfall runoff and then how the flood routing all the, the, the takes place. So, that we have to get through a hydraulic design. Uh, then uh, design of an urban drainage system uh, requires knowledge of the catchment area and topography. Uh, then urbanization details, rainfall intensity, hydrology, uh, hydraulics, etcetera. So, the number of uh, factors, number of the things we have to consider when we go for urban drainage designs uh, like um, the catchment area, its topography, then uh, the rainfall details, and then um, the hydraulics details, etcetera. Then um, uh, as we discussed um, uh, most of the time it is always better to go for watershed or catchments uh, as basis uh, as far as urban drainage design is concerned. So, that way we should have the uh, contours uh, uh, of the of the uh, watershed, uh, so that we can easily determine the boundaries of the watershed uh, of the catchments uh, for computing the directions of flow. So, as we discussed earlier based upon the contours and then the topo sheet details we can uh, come up with a digital elevation model. So, this digital elevation model as shown here that indicates the flow directions and then um, uh, how the, uh, the if a flood takes place how it will um, be, be affecting the uh, watershed. Then uh, say as far as rainfall is concerned another important data. So, um, uh, for design of a drainage uh, system um, the conventional practice is to choose an appropriate uh, statistic, statistically relevant uh, design storm to establish the storm water flows to be conveyed based on existing uh, national and international practices. So, uh, certain um, uh, codes are there Indian standard codes or international standard codes. Um, so, accordingly um, uh, we should consider say how much rainfall intensity um, or intensity duration frequency curve um, say for example, depending upon the, the importance of the areas just like airport we, we, we need a uh, say maximum consideration um, or say roads or say specified uh, installations. So, like that we have to consider. Then uh, we can also come up with the design storms uh, which are generally estimated from rainfall data records for a long time and then uh, uh, we can uh, come up with the uh, intensity duration frequency curves. So, which uh, shows the relationships uh, between uh, the, uh, the rainfall intensity and then uh, its uh, possibility of occurrence and this uh, IDF curves need to be used to maintain uh, design standards for new systems and then uh, also uh, retrofitting and replacement of old uh, urban drainage uh, systems. So, that way uh, say we have to uh, keep on updating the idea of curves and then come up with uh, appropriate um, uh, rainfall intensity uh, while designing the, the new urban drainage systems or when we are going for uh, retrofitting or replacement. So, IDF curves should be developed for each city uh, based on extraction of data from the raw data charts and uh, this can be a say minimum 15 minutes resolution. So, that um, uh, we can uh, easily identify which are the locations of um, possible locations of flooding or what kind of um, uh, say uh, the, the how the, the uh, discharge or the, the flow depth uh, will be varying uh, within the uh, watershed which we uh, consider. So, now let us look into some of the important uh, design consideration as far as urban drainage is concerned. So, um, some of the important uh, uh, say considerations like a frequency of thunderstorms. So, um, uh, we should uh, also look into additional considerations for planning uh, future urban drainage systems and then as far as um, um, uh, say discharge flow, design flow is concerned to protect urban areas, uh, safe management and passage of water uh, resulting from frequent storm events like um, uh, say uh, we have to look into hydrologic design and then corresponding hydraulic design. Uh, so, we have there should be adequate capacity as far as the drainage system is concerned. So, we have to consider this design flow. Then uh, urban drainage design most of the time our main objectives include uh, hydrologic analysis and design to estimate the peak flow rates and um, the flow hydrograph for the adequate sizing 
and design of um, conveyance and conductivity of control facilities. So, as I mentioned earlier, we had two components one is the hydraulic design, second one is the hydraulic design. So, accordingly, say uh, the main objective is to uh, do a hydraulic analysis uh, and design. So, that gives the peak flow rate, time to peak and all those details and then accordingly we design the, the, the drainage section uh, and then uh, its conveyance and then uh, the, the, the control facilities as far as the uh, flood movement is concerned. So, to estimate the peak flow rates uh, say the knowledge of the rainfall intensity is duration and frequency is required. So, this uh, uh, we can consider the historical rainfall events say for example, at least 10 years and you always say uh, always if you can have more data like 50 years or 100 years of data, we can analyze and then come up with um, say appropriate levels of um, uh, say um, as far as design flow is concerned depending upon the area which we uh, consider. Uh, then um, uh, say when we look into urban drainage uh, design, say we have to deal with a number of problems. So, like um, say some of the important problems are listed here like increasing rainfall intensities. So, um, uh, in the last uh, few decades you can see that uh, many cities like um, Mumbai, uh, Kolkata, uh, then uh, uh, Chennai etcetera are affected by high intensity short duration rainfalls and this rainfall causes um, uh, heavy flooding and uh, uh, large losses as far as the uh, human life and property are concerned. So, so, this can be due to various reasons like uh, cloud burst or the urban heat islands problems or climate change impacts. So, that way uh, we have to deal with uh, increasing rainfall intensities induced by climate change, urban heat islands or other factors uh, which will possibly result in varying return periods for a given intensity of rainfall. And then uh, rainfall intensity to be used for design will also depend upon the time of concentration. So, we have to identify how much is the time of concentration as far as the considered watershed uh, by considering the various parameters. Uh, and then uh, if higher the catchment area, higher will be the time of uh, concentration and lower will be the design rainfall intensity, other factors uh, remaining the uh, same. But we have also have to see the effects like tidal effects say for example, in cities like um, coastal cities like Mumbai or Chennai are affected by the tidal effects also. So, we have to see simultaneously uh, not only related to the, to the rainfall runoff pattern, but also the uh, tidal effects. Uh, as far as peak flow, flow rates are considered, we can simply uh, use um, uh, methods like a rational method which is q is equal to uh, c into i into a, where a is the area of the catchment, i is the intensity of rainfall, c is the coefficient of runoff. Uh, so, this is this simple formula we can utilize uh, for uh, hydrologic analysis. And then um, uh, say we can all say as far as this uh, rational formula is concerned approximations based on runoff coefficient and uh, rainfall intensity and area of catchment. So, that way uh, we can easily uh, do uh, uh, calculations and designs as far as the hydrology is concerned. And then uh, hydraulic design say just like the, the cross section of a, uh, the drainage system, uh, we can uh, use simple uh, equations like um, uh, Manning's equations or Chessy's equations for simple design. But whenever we are looking for the, the uh, routing, flow, flood routing is concerned, we have to go for uh, numerical techniques and softwares like HEC, uh, HMS or HEC, RAS type of um, modeling tools. So, for a um, uh, simple channel design, we can use Manning's equation like Q is equal to A into R to the power 2 by 3 S to the power 1 by 2 uh, divided by N, where N is the Manning's reference coefficient, A is the uh, area of cross section, R is the hydraulic radius and S is the slope. For computation of water level um, profiles in the drainage systems or channel rivers, uh, say we can go for suitable softwares for flood routing, uh, just like public domain softwares like HEC HMS for hydrologic modeling of the watershed and then HEC RAS for river modeling or we can go for um, uh, software, like, software like SWM storm water management model uh, for sewer drainage design. So, that way uh, we can either go for a simple uh, modeling um, models just, just like a rational formula or Manning's uh, equations or we can go for uh, somewhat um, uh, uh, co complex uh, models like HEC HMS or HEC RAS which consider most of the uh, physics, physical parameters as far as the, the uh, uh, rainfall runoff is uh, considered. 
So, all future storm water drainage system uh, may be designed to taking uh, into consideration a runoff coefficient of up to um, uh, C is equal to 0.95 for estimating peak discharge using the uh, rational method. If you are using rational method, so maximum possible generally we can consider 0 0.95. And then uh, say urban drainage system is concerned, uh, we also uh, sh should be, we should deal with the operation and maintenance. So, it is not only appropriate design and then implementation, but um, uh, the operation and maintenance also uh, uh, very important. So, let us look into some of the important aspects as far as the operation and maintenance of the urban drainage uh, system. So, um, uh, proper operations and maintenance are crucial for any uh, urban drainage system to be functional uh, to the design capacity and for its uh, uh, durability uh, um, as well. Uh, so, you can see that uh, say whenever heavy rainfall or the monsoon takes place uh, say, say for example, in India during the monsoon period of uh, 4 to 5 months starting from June to uh, September or October. So, uh, we cannot do many of this maintenance during that time. So, we have to do this maintenance work before the monsoon starts. So, that way pre monsoon uh, desilting uh, a major operation maintenance activity in most of the uh, cities and um, uh, watersheds. Then a uh, periodicity of cleaning of drains should be worked out based on the local conditions. So, as I mentioned uh, local conditions like if there is effect of uh, tides or uh, other kinds of um, uh, uh, parameters which you have to consider, then uh, we have to see whether it we have to do uh, before monsoon only or periodically we have to do. And then uh, another other issues like um, say uh, removal of uh, solid waste. So, you can see that um, uh, many locations uh, say the drains will be clogged due to the solid waste. So, we, there should be suitable interventions in the drainage uh, system uh, like uh, traps, trash tracks, uh, which will reduce the amount of solid waste going into the storm sewers. And then also in many of the um, uh, say, uh, storm drainage systems, um, we can see that uh, uh, so sedimentation is a problem, silting, silting is a problem uh, in channels or even pipes. So, we have to see uh, uh, various arrangement like removal of sediments um, within the uh, say drainage systems. Uh, so, sometimes hydraulically also we can do this through maintaining certain minimum velocity within the drainage system or uh, say we can also remove it manually. And then also we have to see the, the inlet connectivity between the, the major drains and then minor drains and then we have to see how the system to be uh, worked out. And then also as far as urban drainage system is concerned, some of the special considerations which we have to uh, see uh, as far as the watershed is concerned like low lying areas should be reserved for parks and other low important impact uh, um, uh, human activities um, uh, should be only uh, uh, done. Um, then uh, wherever are unavoidable um, um, buildings in low lying areas should be constructed on uh, um, uh, stills above the high flood level uh, or full tank level. Then uh, for chronic flooding spots alternative uh, locations may be explored for accommodating people staying there. And then a building should be constructed on stills after taking into uh, account the stability of slopes. And then storm water drainage system for coastal cities uh, have to be designed taking into account the tidal variations. So, when we look into urban drainage uh, system, we have to see all these considerations like um, tidal effects, then uh, low laying areas and then uh, if any specific areas always um, flood prone, then what kind of measures we can consider uh, like that. So, various special considerations uh, we have to uh, see uh, as far as urban drainage system uh, design is concerned. So, now uh, say what we are discussing is the important aspects as far as urban drainage system, uh, its considerations, its uh, design and its requirements. So, that is what we are discussing. So, now uh, say one of the important urban drainage system generally uh, in urban areas is, is the roadside uh, drainage system. So, uh, say if we have appropriate road, roadside drainage system, we can see that in most of the urban areas, we can reduce the flooding problems to certain extent. So, uh, as I mentioned earlier, there was a heavy flooding in um, 
on 26 July 2005 in Mumbai uh, due to uh, cloud burst effects of rainfall ab of about uh, more than 940 mm uh, in a time span of 24 hours and then uh, also high tidal effects. So, due to this uh, the, there were heavy flooding in many locations of Mumbai city and um, uh, number of people died and then uh, there was huge economic loss. So, that way uh, then uh, uh, we were asked to look into the, the roadside drainage system as far as the, the, uh, the uh, Mumbai city is concerned, most of the important roads of Mumbai city is are concerned. So, then uh, uh, we looked into various design aspects of uh, various existing conditions as far as this Mumbai roads are concerned and then uh, we went through all the design procedures as far as roadside drainage design is concerned and then we come up with uh, certain guidelines. So, I will uh, just uh, discuss this roadside drainage design uh, within this context of um, uh, Mumbai roads uh, which we uh, which we redesigned a um, few years back. Uh, by considering the various um, uh, rainfall conditions, tidal conditions and then uh, the, the road conditions and the site conditions. So, some of the important uh, aspects are uh, listed here. So, uh, as I mentioned uh, roadside drain is integral part of urban drainage systems. So, this is actually storm drainage. So, whatever the, the uh, storm water from the nearby areas it will be mainly coming through these uh, roadside drains and then it will be going to the to these um, larger drainage systems or the nalas or channels. So, the storm drainage here what is happening we collect the storm water runoff uh, uh, then uh, th this should be away from structures and through roadway or the waterway or right of way. So, you can see that if this is a, the road then uh, uh, we have to collect all this um, uh, the, the storm water coming from adjacent areas and then uh, generally the drainage system storm water drains will be on the sides of the uh, roads and then uh, we have to see appropriate um, uh, uh, design as far as the roadside drainage system is concerned. So, some of the important objectives for such a design is hydrologic, we have to see the hydrologic uh, aspects like um, rainfall to runoff, then we have to see the hydraulic considerations like um, what kind of section to be given, what kind of um, drain, open drain or pipe drain, uh, so what kind of drain is to be given. Uh, so, the main objective will be minimize the flooding and then erosion to properties and then uh, safe traffic. So, in a, an urban area if, the, if there is the if we can reduce the flood risk through all the roads then uh, most of the uh, inconveniences caused due to urban um, flooding can be reduced to a larger extent. Uh, so, that way we have to see say when we design the, the, the roadside drain we have to see the, the road layouts and then uh, various junctions, various flyovers and various um, natural drains coming and then uh, wherever say the, uh, the cross drainage systems and then the directions, then in the slope, all these important aspects we have to consider when we look into uh, roadside uh, drainage design. Uh, so, uh, as I mentioned uh, say we have formulated the design steps, so some of the important design steps we will discuss here. So, design problem and design criteria specification. Uh, so, we should uh, see uh, what kind of design we are looking for, then uh, what kind of locality, whether just like a crowded place like in Mumbai or a small city where not much crowd is there. So, accordingly we have to see the uh, roadside drainage design. Then uh, the system drainage area definition and primary layout. So, we should get the road layout accordingly, uh, we should uh, go for the, uh, the drainage and then the drainage area. Then uh, we should get the street layout, total drainage, then the field and uh, uh, office data collection. So, uh, we should uh, go to the field and then see the specific problems uh, like um, uh, the, the width, uh, the say whether in trees are there, outcrops utility locations etcetera, then we should come up with the system layout. So, the final layout uh, sh we should have the, like all ditches, waterways, inlets, manholes, uh, mains, laterals, culverts, flow direction etcetera. So, we have to go uh, systematically. Uh, then uh, next step is uh, hydraulic calculations. So, we have to uh, identify as far as road side is, road is concerned. So, how much um, uh, water will be coming from both sides 
so we have to see that area and then how much is the rainfall uh, possible and then uh, we should go for hydrologic calculations. So, um, uh, we may have to go for a hydrologic modeling uh, rainfall runoff. So, flow estimations uh, for the design frequency we have to consider. So, we have to see uh, the intensity duration frequency curve uh, or return periods which we have to consider 2 years return period or 5 years return period or 50 years return period like that. Then we have to see the street flow uh, like a flow and spread calculations, then a maximum spread uh, gutters flow like that. Then inlet spacing and layout, so like location and type of inlets, size, extra inlet, etcetera. Uh, then we have to see the hydraulic calculations like a size of the drain, permissible velocity, slopes, etcetera. Uh, then various design checks like um, uh, discharge, fruit number, velocity, slope. Uh, like this, all these parameters uh, we have to consider as far as the roadside drainage uh, design is concerned. Uh, so, it is not only hydrologic aspects, but also the hydraulic aspects um, uh, like size of the drain, velocity, slope, etcetera. So, some of the important factors which we have to consider when we go for roadside uh, drainage design is um, are listed here. Uh, like a uh, return period of flow like uh, 2 years return period or 5 years return period or 50 years return period. So, this depends upon the city area and then the importance of the area. Then uh, the water spread area say like um, when we consider the road both sides how much area whether it is uh, the, the, the on a watershed basis or only a strip wise both sides like 50 meter or 100 meter both sides of the road side. Then inlet types and spacing. So, how this flow is coming to the to the roadside drains. So, and then what is the spacing for that. Then longitudinal longitude slope we have to see, then cross slope, then curves and uh, gutter sections. So, how the curves and how the gutters, how this, this is considered. Then roadside and median channels, uh, bridge decks, flyover, shoulder gutter, median barriers, storm drains, detention storage, erosion and then what is the cost, how much cost uh, we say what are the uh, the financial layout as far as uh, whether we, we have to go for very uh, expensive drainage systems or how we can reduce the cost. So, all those issues uh, we have to consider. So, these are some of the important factors uh, which we have to consider when we deal with the drainage design. So, uh, some of the important design considerations uh, I have listed here like how much area should be considered uh, for a reach. So, if this is the, the mounts which we consider then uh, both sides how much area we have to consider. So, actual length is in between hydraulic mount to the drainage point. So, this is the drainage point. So, this is the hydraulic mount. So, how much area we have to consider. Then second issue is uh, how much width should be considered on other side of the road drainage. Internationally roadside drain are designed to cater only road runoff, but in uh, highly populated area like Mumbai, uh, we have to consider the, the, the runoff coming from nearby areas also. So, nearby properties all this runoff will be coming to the roadside drains. So, we have to uh, deal that also. So, then uh, actual width should be uh, based on topographical survey. And then the roads in Mumbai say for example, uh, we have to see the actual area quantum between road side since it is heavily populated and then uh, roads are very narrow. So, that way we have to consider. Then third issue which we have to consider is uh, design rainfall intensity. Uh, generally a rainfall intensity with a 10 year return period is considered say for important roads it should be about 50 year return period say like um, roads connected to airport area like that. Then should be based on time of concentration uh, and then Indian city duration frequency curve. So, Indian road contracts say for example, recommends time of concentration as uh, made of two time periods. One is the time required for the uh, rainwater to flow over the road surface and enter into the drain and then time of flow in the drains. So, this is demonstrated. So, this is see if this is center line of the road, this is the road. So, this is T 1 the time of this flow to enter to this outside drain and then T 2 is say this say how to how much time to reach the uh, main uh, and drain or nala or the channel. So, that way we have to consider the time of concentration is equal to T 1 plus T 2. So, some of the important design considerations say for example, if you consider Indian road contours uh, manual number 50, say for example, Mumbai they uh, suggest say minimum 50 mm 
per hour rain fall, then the values are worked out assuming time of concentration of 30 minutes, then rate of rain fall is 62.5 mm per hour with a return period of 2 years and then average uh, runoff coefficient to be considered 0 0.6. So, these are the details as given for uh, given in IRC 50 and then uh, like uh, type of surface uh, like bituminous uh, uh, the, the runoff coefficient can be 0 0.8 to 0 0.9, impervious soil 0 0.4 to 0 0.65. So, like that depending upon the area and uh, we can consider the, the, the runoff coefficient. Then uh, say uh, as far as hydraulic design is concerned uh, if you use the Manning's um, uh, equations then Manning's coefficient value we have to consider. So, if it is conjugate channel then it can vary from 0 0.0132 to 0 0.017. So, for various uh, surface characteristics the range of n is uh, given here this we can get from standard literature. Then next uh, important design concerns permissible velocity in the road drains. So, as far as uh, RCC drains if you consider allowable maximum velocity 6 meter per second and minimum velocity uh, say, uh, say up to say uh, point 30 centimeter per second and uh, but even the 6 meter per maximum is allowed, but uh, restricted it is restricted generally to 3 meter per second as per Indian road congress uh, courts. Then uh, another important aspect is width and depth. So, the width is as per the local width available for the uh, construction of the drains, then depth should be estimated based on Manning's formula. As far as possible uh, we can go for rectangular drains, then economical section is uh, the width is equal to 2 times depth and some places we may have to if we are going for open drains, some places we may have to go for further pipe drains. Then as per IRC 50. A minimum width of drain should not be less than 250 mm and in case of pipe the minimum diameter should not be less than 450 mm. This is as per Indian Road Congress uh, manual number 50. Uh, then uh, eighth point is slope of the drains. So, like longitudinal slope generally slope should not be less than 0.3 percent, but in flat terrain it can go up to 0.2 percent and slope is designed such a way that the flow is always in subcritical flow. So, there should not be any a supercritical flow condition so that um, there is any hydraulic jump can take place within the channel that may create further flooding problems. Uh, so, as far as IRC 50 code minimum longitudinal gradient is 0 0.3 percent. Then free board also we have to when we go for open channel type um, uh, uh, design uh, 0.3 meter is the, in the prescribed um, uh, uh, free board. Uh, but uh, say for example, in a city like Mumbai, very flat terrain and does not allow to have more free boards, then IRC recommends like um, uh, if the bed width is less than 300 mm, uh, free board minimum should be 10 centimeter, 300 to 900 mm to 15 centimeter, 900 to 1500 mm uh, 30 centimeter and for larger size it should be uh, 90 centimeter. So, like that. Then uh, say design consideration like a type of inlet to drains. So, we can have either uh, curb inlet or we can have greater inlet or we can have combined inlet. So, we should have say depending upon the, the terrain, depending upon the location, we should go for uh, the best possible type of inlet, inlet to the drains. Then like a junction box size, the, this should be designed as per the velocity of the water causing the causing or joining each other. Uh, then uh, as far as the Nala is concerned, Nala with this all these small drains what will be taking to the Nalas or the uh, streams. So, level difference between the invert level of the, uh, the invert level and maximum water level in the Nala, we have to see the, if the invert level of the drain is lower than the uh, maximum water level in Nala, then Nala water starts uh, entering to the drains. So, then slope has to be modified and designed in such that uh, the invert level of drains is above the, um, the uh, maximum water level of Nala. Then um, uh, connection between the main drain or either side of the road uh, we have to see. Then uh, points important points like design of uh, drain uh, draining to the creek or Nala having tidal effect. So, as I mentioned in a city like Mumbai tide is an important factor as far as spreading is concerned. So, we have to see that uh, whether the outlet of the drain is to a creek or to a nala whose water level rises according to the tidal level and the invert level of the drain should be above the high tide level uh, else sea water may enter to the drain. If possible a large size drain may be constructed which can act as holding ponds until the, the high tide level. 
Uh, then uh, say we need a large quantity of data when we go for uh, the roadside drainage system design or the urban drainage design. So, some of the important data like uh, rainfall intensity, then runoff coefficient, area contributing to drains, then cross sectional parameters, um, the reduced level of the hydraulic mounts, then reduced level of the ground level, invert level of the drains. So, like this all this data required uh, as far as the uh, drainage design is concerned. Then key plan of the work, uh, the, the, the uh, area like uh, the length, location of the nala, size, invert level of drains at starting point and draining point, slope between the sections, other major drainage uh, work nearby or river nearby. So, all these uh, key plans should be available. Then detailed plan of the road like uh, length, location of point of so point sources and their discharges, hydrologic mounts. Uh, reduced level of ground levels, then uh, arrows uh, showing the flow direction of storm water in the drains, location of draining, draining nala, location and size of cross drainage work, location of manholes and their sizes and uh, any other data size specific. So, all this data detailed uh, plan of the road and all the data should be available. Then uh, longitudinal selection, uh, section drawing like um, finished road level, reduced level of existing ground level. Uh, invert level of drains, bed levels, uh, water levels of nala, location of uh, curb inlet points, location and size of uh, other point source joining the drain. So, like this. So, all this um, data should be available. Uh, so, when we go for integrated urban drainage system design, so including the road safe drains and then uh, the nala system or the, the channel system. So, we, we should have integrated uh, drainage design plan so that um, the the flood effect uh, if if any possibility is there that can be reduced and then we can have a better management plans and better design so that there is no flood uh, problems as far as the area is concerned for today's lecture some of the important references are shown here uh, then uh, says before closing the lecture uh, some tutorial questions and assignment questions uh, critically study the urban drainage design methodology adopted in india uh, some uh, details you can see in this website. Compare the urban drainage design practices in, in the US, UK and India and propose better management practices for Indian cities. Then few self evaluation questions. What are the important uh, causes of urban flooding? What are the difficulties in urban flood management? Discuss watershed based urban flood management. Describe the inventories to be taken for storm water drainage system. Uh, what are the important design considerations for urban drainage systems? What are the important data to be considered for roadside and drainage design? So, all these questions you can easily answer by going through today's lecture. Then few assignment questions. What are the important strategies for urban flood disaster risk management? Illustrate various urban drainage systems. What are the important design requirements for urban drainage systems? Discuss the important design considerations for roadside drainage design what are the important factors to be considered for roadside drainage design. So, these questions also you can answer by going through today's lecture. So, what we discussed today is urban drainage design and then um, say an integrated design system by considering all the aspects including the roadside drains, NALA system or the channel system. So, that we can have an effective drainage uh, design. Thank you very much.